In this video today, I'm going to show you how to set up a simple form with a couple of different tabs in our Nitro Forms Designer tool. First off, I'll show you how to get to the Nitro Forms Designer tool. But first, we're going to work with a list called Tickets 2, which exists within one of our demo sites. And when you are going to design a form in Nitro Designer, the first thing to do is create a list and add some columns to it. So the way you get to Nitro Forms is a couple different options. One is to go through the list ribbon for the list and click on the Nitro Forms button in the ribbon. Another option is to go to list settings where you'll see Crow Canyon Nitro Forms in this middle section, permissions and management, kind of towards the bottom. And the third way to get there is through the Nitro Studio interface. There's a Nitro Forms link. I'm going to go ahead and click the Nitro Forms link. I'm going to select the tickets to list, and then I'm going to hit go. And this will bring us to the Nitro Forms uh, building interface. So you have a default form which has nothing on it. And we got to build this from scratch. So the first thing you're going to do is click on form settings. And in form settings, what you're going to, to do is create a new form called, in, in this demo, we're going to call it Nitro Demo. So you could copy from an existing form. But in this case, we don't have any. So we're just going to go ahead and create it from scratch called Nitro Form. We'll hit OK. You'll see in here that there's an option to switch back to using native SharePoint forms if you decide that you don't want to use the Nitro forms for this list any longer. And there's also options to create different forms for the new edit and display forms of the SharePoint item. Uh, in this case, we're going to use the same form for all three, but in some cases you might want to use a different one for each option. And then you'll see for, further down there is an option for a system design form which will show all of the columns in the list or you can have a custom design form, which is what we're going to do today. So we're going to hit OK. And this will render the list. All right, once rendered, you'll see that you have an option to modify the title of the tab. And we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to direct your attention over to the right hand side. This is where you change the title of the tab and we're going to call it basic info. And we're going to hit apply. And you'll see that the name of the tab has changed. Now you have a couple different options. Tabbing is one option, but you could also use sections. Those will look a little bit different. And there's a few different options for those uh, sections. And for this demo, we're going to use tabs. All your Col list columns up here in this form controls section. So we're going to expand that out. You'll see that you do have an option to add another tab and we'll do that in just a moment. But first what we want to do is add a few columns in here. So I'm going to drag and drop the form control onto the form itself. In this case, we've added a requester. We're going to add requester email. We're going to add a description field right here. Uh, now, if you have a long list of columns and you can't find the one you're looking for easily, you can start typing into the search box and it'll bring up all the form, all the form controls that match that name that you've typed in. So we're going to go ahead and hit and add a category and then issue type as well. Once you have the fields on your form, you can go ahead and move them around. So let's say I'm going to go ahead and put category and issue type further towards the top. Another option you have here is if you do not have the column available in your list of form controls, you can simply go to the create column button at the top, click create column, and we're going to create a new column called alternate email. It's going to be a single line of text column. We'll ignore all these other settings for the moment. We'll just go ahead and create it. Oh, we've already used it. So let me call this alternate email too. I'll hit okay. And now you'll see that you have alternate email too. We can go ahead and add that to our list. And let's say you decide I don't want to use this column any longer. I'm going to go ahead and delete that column from my list. So you notice when you select one of these columns in the form itself, 
you have a few different options over here. And in, in later videos, I'll go through the permissions and validations. But for this video, I want to point you to the option to require that the column contains information. This makes it a column that will it'll re return a validation error if that column does not have information in it. We're going to leave that off for now. Now let's go ahead and add a second tab. We'll call this tab request info and we'll add a couple different columns to this tab. Now all your columns become available again because you could have the same column uh, available on multiple tabs if you wanted to. And we're going to go ahead and add assign staff and we're going to go ahead and add request status and then we're going to add related asset. So if I type in related, related asset link comes up and we're going to add due date as well. So now that these have been added, uh, you'll notice that I forgot to hit apply when I changed the name of the tab to request info. So I'm going to go back to that, hit request, change it to request info, click apply. And now that, that change has been made. So you can save your changes and continue to add on to the form and add new fields to the form. Or you can go ahead and publish the form as is. I'm going to go ahead and do that and publish the form. And you'll see that you ha we have the form up over here. I'm going to refresh the page and you'll see that the new form has come up with the information that we just added. Uh, in later videos, look for more videos to for further configuration options within the Nitro Forms tool. Thank you for watching.